Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we got that in second. I did get my second and third. Unfortunately, yeah, I had to get them from like a bunch of different vendors. I got six total. I was able to score another one a couple days ago. So now I have six, essentially a case. So not really a case, though, because again, had to be from different vendors just because so many of them implemented uh, limits. So obviously, you couldn't just, you know, buy them out. So hey, is he not against that or anything? Obviously, those limits are only as good as how you can enforce them, right? Because obviously, hey man, just uh, put can I can you buy this for me? And uh, or like, what if you live with someone else? Or what if you just place another order? It's it's depending on how enforced it is that those limits are gonna work. But assuming they are enforced, then hey, I do agree with them. I do think that situations like this or one piece, it is kind of a, a given. You know, I don't think you now you can expect to just walk into a store and be like, hey, give me ten boxes of Star Wars <laughs> unlimited. And they're gonna be like, yeah, bro. It's just probably not gonna be a thing, you know, especially the first wave. Obviously, like I said, I did mention the product is being released in waves. So if it's too expensive for you right now, obviously, eh? if you can find it locally for close to MSRP, then I do recommend just waiting. Again, it is it is a guarantee. It is not like a question of, oh, will they reprint it? It's 100% sure. Like they already said they would. So don't worry about it. Obviously, just uh, <laughs> what the hell? Endless Legion, and we got a, all the storm. What the hell? Seriously? I get pissed off whenever I see <laughs> the reprints because it's like, why? Why would you give me reprints of Shadows of the Galaxy? Especially Shadows of the Galaxy that I opened so many boxes. God damn it. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, separate the. Just because it's so much easier when you're organizing your bulk. If you actually separate it right away, I know it. You would think, huh? Like, oh, just organize it later. But trust me, once you open a couple boxes. You are asking for it, trust me. You do not want to just leave it until the end, especially if you have a bunch of boxes. So, not worth it. Anyways, keep going. So obviously it's been a couple days, well, a couple days, it's Monday. <laughs> and the set came out, uh, whoa, what the hell, this is a cool one. Yeah, hunting next, so just a comment, but pretty cool. It's been a couple days, obviously nothing too crazy. It's barely, oh, I almost got excited for a second. Hey, we got Chewbacca though barely been uh, like three days so obviously you guys might not be still too sure how you feel about the set but obviously what are the early impressions meta wise collecting wise obviously uh collecting wise personally i'm more so of a collector so for me this is a little bit of a step back just because i don't recognize the character so it's like oh but obviously the art is still pretty similar they're still going or they're seemingly gonna go 100 percent for that cartoony look which i know a lot of people like i know a lot of people like the the Clone Wars, especially the Clone Wars. I think that was one of their most uh, positively talked about uh, cartoon shows. So I unfortunately never watched it. I think the Bad Batch also is a cartoon one. So I think those two are some of the, what the hell, Boba Fett? Hey, let's go. So another one of those Darth Vader situations, Darth Vader and Luke, where they're, they'll give you the character. That they just won't say it's Boba Fett, you know. But that's pretty cool. Because he did have a legendary already. So that actually makes some sense. I mean, I guess Star Vader as well, huh? There you go. Okay, so let's keep going. Going for those. Uh... Honestly, I don't even know what I'm... Oh, I, I know that chase card now. I saw it, actually. It is Poe. I confirmed it. Because I had seen some people complain about it on the group. So I thought it might be one of the chase cards. But no, it's actually like the chase card. It's like the Darth Vader of the set, pretty much. Obviously, I'm guessing not because of collectors. I don't think collectors are going that crazy over Poe. But... You know, I think it's more to do with the fact that... Nice. We got Dr. Evason. Or Evason. It's more so to do with the meta. It's probably one of the, you know, those cards that, you know, everyone needs. Or it's a staple of... Kind of like, uh, what's it called? Cunning started off like... Oh, Vigilance. Vigilance is probably the best example of the... It started off like a $9 card. Just because you have to realize, if you're buying cards right now, it, it is a great time right now. And I know you might think, like, are you insane? Aren't uh, is there everything inflated right now? And yes and no, because you have to realize that on release, this is probably going to be the biggest influx of cards that a bunch of people are going to have. So everyone is going to start offloading it. Everyone's going to compete with each other. So a lot of the cards are going to slowly start going back up because they're actually very high in demand, the in demand cards, the meta cards. 
So other than the Poe, obviously you can gamble on that one just because it is pretty pricey. But if it's like a $10, $15 card, I mean, I would definitely, and if you think it has potential, like for example, evacuate, right? It reminds me a little bit of Super Laser Blast and uh, where you can take, I think it bounces everything right to the hand or something like that, except heroes. So it is a pretty good card. And I think it was going for like 12 bucks. So I don't think it's, you know, that expensive. And I think it could be a good card. So car cards like that, that you might feel that have some potential. If you see them on the cheap right now, I would definitely suggest picking them up because you don't want to end up like Vigilance again. <laughs> Trust me, Vigilance right now, I think it's still going. Oh, Hyperfoil, let's go. Let's see which one. Vigilance, I believe is still going for like 30 40 dollars is insane and at one point i trust me i know because i sold some uh, i sold some for like i think like 12 bucks so no trust me there is definitely a yikes all that excitement for a hyper foil comma yeah. well it is the first one so maybe we can get a at least if, as long as you get a rare honestly i'm happy i get it obviously legendaries are the point but man i opened so many spark or yeah right spark of rebellion i was about to say shadows i was confused I, was, I opened so many Spark of Rebellion where all, all my hyper foils were comments. It was so annoying. It was like, come on, man. Like, you could at least give me an uncommon. Because you'll never know, dude. Some uncommons are actually pretty, like, worth a lot. <laughs> Even some comments, actually. I think the one I got in the previous books actually was one of those. Like, one of the few comments that actually was uh, worth the bam. Because it was the... I mean, that one's also more so for a collector. It's the Luke and Darth Vader one. I think it's Rivals Fall or something like that, where they're, like, clashing their lightsabers. Obviously, that one's going to be a little more pricey. It has literally the two most iconic characters in the in the entire franchise. <laughs> kind of funny. I haven't seen Darth Maul. What the hell? Is he a leader? I kind of hope he's a leader because that would mean he has a showcase. So that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty neat. Nice. You keep giving me hyperspace... Uh, Leaders. Oh shit, we got a hyper. Okay, okay. Hyper foil. Let's not spoil. Come on, at least give me an uncommon. Come on, that's all I'm asking. We're not even asking for like a legendary, bro. <gasps> what the fuck? Dude, there is no. We're talking about it and we bring the to existence, bro. We manifest out here. Holy shit. I do notice. <laughs> I will try to cut back on my swearing. I've been going crazy in these last videos, man. And I get it. I'm a small channel. We're we're not even at a hundred subs, but still, you know, I I someone everyone doesn't do it for a reason. I'm guessing obviously it might be negative. So I'll try to cut back on it. And also, you never know who's listening. And I know some people might not be a fan of you know the occasional f bomb every every once in a while. So. I'll try to cut back on it, but God fucking damn it. Look at that. Look at that legendary hyperfold, dude. It took me, what, 27 boxes in Spark of Rebellion to get it? What the f... See, there you go, progress. Man, that is crazy. I actually can't believe that crap. It took me 27, I think it was 27 or 28, actually, boxes to see the first one. And, and it wasn't even a good one. It was, a, what was it? It was Force Lightning, bro. <laughs> they gave me Force Lightning. You're probably one of the worst ones. Oh wait, I'm putting the words here. Probably one of the worst ones. But I was I was so thrilled just to see it, man. You give me Poe in the second box. Are you crazy? God damn, we're going crazy on that. I don't even care what you give me at this point. Shit, you can give me crap legendaries for all I care. I think I actually was looking at my previous box, and I did get two pretty bad ones. I think speaking of evacuate. Evacuate, I think it's like a $12 card. It's not that bad. But I did get the worst one, which is the... Man, what was the name of it? The Twin Suns, I think. The one that is like the ship. That has like... The one that I mentioned is like... That has like three looking suns to it. I forgot the name of the card exactly. Oh, I think I might have it right here, actually. Hold up. Oh, never mind. That's for my pre-release kit. Hold up, I actually might have, I should have it somewhere here. Because this is, yeah, this is definitely the box I hope. Oh, and this is the Luke one I was talking about, by the way. In case you were wondering. The one that I was saying that is, like, actually worth a lot. Uh, where the hell did I leave it? Oh, right here. Rival's Fall, yeah. So this one. Very, very nice card. Uh, where the... Oh, right here. Yeah, Finalizer. Sorry, it's Finalizer. There you go. Not Twin Sons. The Finalizer. So, yeah. That's, I think, the cheapest one. I think that one's, like, pretty much... That's this set's black one. <laughs> Essentially, you don't want to see that card. 
it's like eight dollars so obviously it could go up again it's one of those things right now look at the cheaper cards because hey you never know obviously some of the more expensive cards like Darth Vader never really went down just because he's actually a really good card and he's Darth Vader so yeah and Boba Fett as well or looks oh actually look it did go up because he started off like a I think that's a 20 something dollar card and he ended up as a 40 something I think still to this day so again just look at the cheaper cards in my opinion it's worth taking a look again if, if a card is already 50 40 dollars realistically speaking it's not gonna go much harder than that right Unless it's some insane metal warping card, which realistically speaking, I don't think we're at that point yet. Because I feel like I would have seen people complaining way more. So it just seems like it's a good card. So those cards usually are pretty stable. So in my opinion, don't, you know, don't stress too much about those. Right now, in my opinion, focus on the cheaper ones that have that potential to raise. So just keep an eye out on tournaments, you know, locals. See what people are playing. See what see what people are crafting. And all that good stuff. What the hell? Do I swear? I recognize... How I could tell you, I think with my can, like how many cards are recognized, like the characters of what the hell. They really went all in with the show, so. I mean, I don't blame them because they have, dude, they have so many shows. I actually didn't realize how many shows they had. I thought it was just, uh, you know, the newer ones, but not. Nah, they're including, you know, like the older ones as well, obviously. So it's uh, kind of crazy. They do have so many shows. Do they have more shows than movies? That's actually a, a very interesting question. Without counting spin-offs, without counting spin-offs. Because obviously you could count the prequel, Han Solo, and Rogue One. But I'm saying the, the official ones. Do they actually have <laughs> more series or show, slash shows than uh, than movies? Because that would be pretty, that'd be pretty crazy, in my opinion. Man, we got a... Damn, oh shit, we got a... I think this is one of the better rares, so I'll definitely take it. The DL Blaster. I actually managed to get a hyper one. I think it was just a regular hyper, not a hyper foil, but still pretty cool. I'll definitely still take it. There you go. Dude, yeah, we, we're only getting one legendary, and this box is already blessed. I actually don't know how much it is, the pull. I know the regular version is like $50, so... I <laughs> you know I'm saying, that uh, hyper, hyper foil version uh, on release. Hopefully we can uh, sell it and uh, fuel our addiction for cardboard. And hopefully get, I don't know, I mean, I guess set three. Because again... I would get more Shadows of the Galaxy because I can probably find it for in one of my LGSs, at least a couple more boxes. Maybe I'll get like one, two more, but I don't think I'll go too crazy on this set just because, again, i more much more of a collector and, you know, this isn't really my expertise. Like if I were to keep this card, it's just because he looks like Red Hood. Like, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's where we're at at this point, bro. We're very, very... Uh, I mean, it's something I could just fix, you know, I could just pop in Disney Plus and watch the shows, but man, there's so many. That's the problem I feel like Disney did with this new, well, I don't know, Star Wars. I don't know how interconnected it is with Star Wars, but with Marvel, that's what kind of started taking me out with the MCU. Obviously, after Avengers, it's a huge deal, right? It's a huge climax and we're expected to just go back like a week after, like obviously no, or like a month after it's no, right? I did obviously take a little bit of a break, but... It's just that now that they started connecting the shows afterwards, because I think they started doing it afterwards, right? So for the next big Avengers one, so they can start setting it up and all the pieces. So at first I thought it was kind of neat with Loki, because obviously it's Loki. It's a character that is obviously in the movies and is a huge player, right? In Avengers. But then they started doing it with the other random characters and they all connected. It's like, oh, damn. It's so hard to keep up with. And it's just so overwhelming, especially, obviously, if you watch it week by week on release, it's probably not as bad. But, I mean, you have to realize, bro, I have not watched a single one. Like, do you understand how many hours that would be? And it's just like, uh, it kind of sucks that I might have to actually do it just, you know, to be able to watch Avengers. Because I do want to watch Avengers. I'm still a fan. But it's just like the fact that you have to keep up with so much extra content now outside of the screen, of the silver screen, if you want to call it. It's just kind of insane to me, you know? And hopefully Star Wars isn't going down the road. I don't think so, because I don't think any of the shows are... First of all, I don't think any of the shows are after Episode Nine, so they can't really be a continuation, right? And I think all the ones that are set in between episodes, which I'm guessing most of them are going to be based on between episodes. See, that's the funniest thing. People give so much shit to the prequels, but they do so many of the shows based on that time period because it's the only time period that Jedi are alive. That's so funny. Like you give us you give us so much shit for liking the prequels and the prequels themselves, 
But without them, you wouldn't have this universe to tell all these extended stories. You know? Funny, right? But anyways, and obviously most of them, I think, explore the the fall of the Jedi, which, you know, obviously we don't really see on the screen. So obviously it's a huge uh, expanding point that they can just, you know, talk about over and over. Because, again, we we don't have any Jedi, so that is obviously kind of a big deal, right? So I do think it's pretty interesting. And obviously the more obvious time period to slot shows in because you have such a big gap between episode one and two or episode two and three. I think two and three is actually the most common one, the Clone Wars, so to speak, when Anakin is still good, but you can't tell there's something wrong with this boy. <laughs> like, I don't know how Obi-Wan looked at him and be like, yeah, I don't know, there's something wrong with this guy. But yeah, no, where that's where you can start telling like, okay, Anakin, there's some, uh, I don't know if you're if you're all that, but you're cool, so we'll keep you around. And you're pretty you're pretty damn powerful for, for some reason. So well, he's the chosen one, right? But it's just one of those things. It is pretty interesting. I love when they show Anakin before. I do think that is pretty interesting because we don't really see that a lot. You know, obviously the prequels, but they're all like just leading towards that path, obviously, and they're obviously all setting up to to that. So I do think it is pretty interesting when he's not the main focus, when we're not just seeing his path to destruction, when we're just seeing him as a person, just you know, be so. I, I I always love that when they actually you know give the characters more uh, more room to you know be be people, not just the goals that the directors want them to achieve. Which I get it is probably the boring scenes that you guys uh, probably would skip. <laughs> that most people would probably skip the character development. But hey, I love that shit, man. Cover strength, mercenary. But all right, let's go back to the game. We, we I mean, it's Star Wars, obviously. I mean, hey, like like I said, I love the movies, man. So. I'm always down to talk about them. Just uh, pretty much any jetpack. What the hell? How have I not seen you before? Have I seen this card before? I feel like I would have commented on it. It looks so sick. Uh, a Boba Fett is just flying out. Oh, and I actually think uh, Boba Fett is also in one of the shows. Because he can be, right? Because he's not that. So that's a cool thing, too. When you set on the prequels, you can pretty much include damn near everyone. You can damn near include Darth Maul if you want to. He's probably in one of the shows, even. If he is, that would be so funny. I, please let me know. Because he died in episode one. So that would be even crazier. They actually somehow still uh, managed to bring that motherfucker in. We got Hunter. Oh, I keep forgetting to show the leader card. Sorry, the back. Sorry. But it's pretty much the same art, right? Yeah, now that I think about it. You're not really missing out on much. Because it's just the same. Even in showcases, it is the same. I kind of wish it was different. But obviously, that is the whole point, right? That is like the extended art. And uh, that's the, the vertical one is done. The not so extended. Oh. Oh, what the hell? Oh, dude, nah. Nah. Nah, there is no... Oh, my God. And also, a rare foil. I'll definitely take that. And also, I was wondering. I have uh, IG-88, the showcase one. I actually managed to pull it. So, that was pretty cool. Now, I have IG-11. How many IGs are there? But anyways, dude, what the hell? We got that double pull. I'll be honest, his character, I did like him, but it was a little bit forgettable in my opinion, just because, and also he is the one who delivers that line, Palpatine has returned, which I'm sorry, anyone who, anyone who's has to deliver that line, yeah, it's going to cost you a little points, but I kind of forgot about him in, when I was talking about it in the previous video, but no, I actually did like his character, you know, just like a stand-up dude, we always have to have those, I, yeah. I always usually am a fan of them, so, but I don't know, I just kind of like the... Uh, well, because wasn't he's like the cap? Oh well, yeah, he was a captain of the rebellion. That's right. He was like the rebel. Oh, I remember. I kind of didn't like him in episode eight though, because he was like a little bit. Uh, oh, I'm disobeying orders, and he's like, "Come on, man! Like we're we're about to die, and you're really pulling this shit." But hey, and in the end, I think his superior actually turned out to be like good, and I think she sacrificed himself herself or something like that. So. You know, it's one of those, it's character development. So, you know, I was bitching about it. So, whatever. You know, it's character development. So, let's have it. Let's have it. Let's go. I think we're still missing a legendary. Yeah, because you get three. And obviously, the hyper one doesn't count. Hypers of foils don't count in case you're curious. Because obviously, that's an extra slot, right? Because you, you have... <laughs> Look at that. What the hell is this? Dude. This thing is like a combination of a sandworm and a dragon. What the hell? Is this what eats... Uh, no, it's not right. No, it's definitely not what eats Boba Fett. 
It, that was one of those trap hole things. Yeah, no, this is like a completely new one. This must, this definitely must be from the shows because I don't recognize it. But dude, that looks sick. That's cool. I'll definitely give you that one star. Dude, Star Wars character design is on point. So, so cool. That's a cool thing when you can do aliens, right? You can do whatever the hell you want with their body. So it doesn't have to make sense. Oh, final two packs. Man, this box was stacked. I don't even know what to say anymore at this point. I, I mean, yeah, no, we <laughs> we have been blessed on this one, boys. Uh, we got the double pull. We got that. Oh, I, and you still give me an uncommon foil. Even though you gave me, dude, I'll take it. Honestly, you gave me that legendary, so you could have given me all comments after that shit. Wait. Is that Sasha Banks' character? Because I know she was in The Mandalorian for like an episode. Is that it? Dude, if it is, that's crazy. I still can't believe she was in Star Wars. That's so funny. Let's go. Or Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, whatever you want to call her now. Yeah. If you're a fan of all that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, sorry. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole other discussion. Let's go on. Final pack. I don't think... Honestly... Don't give me a showcase at this point. It's too much. It would be unfair. You, someone else can have the showcase. It's fine. Fuck. Them. No, I'm just kidding. If you're going to give me a showcase. I'm, you know what I'm saying, but. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. But honestly, it was an insane box. I'm already, you know, that was just insane. I got the high profile, the best one probably. I don't know if it's, I'm guessing it is the number one because that was the one I see people complain about. And usually the one people complain about is the most expensive cards, aka Darth Vader or Boba Fett. So hopefully it is. I'm not too sure about the dragon. I'm not sure if it's one of the better ones, but I'll be honest with you. I got a double pull. So he could be the next black one for all I care. And I'm chilling. So let's keep going. And holy crap. Uh, I just can't believe it. They actually gave me hyper foil in my second box. Damn. We are going with bangers on Star Wars. Dude. We're starting insane. First box in the previous one, a showcase. And then in the second one, too, and in this one, a uh, hyper full legendary in two boxes. Let's go. Cool. Cannot be stopped. So, okay. Let's do the top five. It might surprise you, actually, which one is number one. Because you might think it's so obvious, but you might be wrong. Hold up. But anyways, yeah, no, obviously, fun opening. But again, more so of a collector. It, this, this set is just, I don't think, you know the the biggest for me but still overall fun obviously i love seeing the star wars art just in general i don't really care if i don't really recognize all the characters it's still fun you know to see the extended lore to see oh i wonder who this guy is i wonder you know his story it's always you know, all the fun let's go i need one more uh fuck it let's just do this one all right we got five Five for the top five. So nice. All right, number one. Sandworms. No, I'm just kidding. That is. Oh, I was gonna say Crip Dragon. It's Krite. Krite or Krite? Krite. I'll say Krite. Krite Dragon. So pretty much a Krite Dragon. Ha ha ha. Funny. And then let's actually read it. I mean, it's pretty short, right? I think most of the cards in this game are still nice. Are still pretty short. Because, I mean, it's still pretty short, right? This is short. This is short. It's really short. This is still fairly... I mean, because obviously you choose once. It's not like you're doing all these, right? So, hey, relax. It's not that bad. But I think that's good. Because obviously, once you start getting to the point where the text is so overwhelming, aka look at, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Where they have so many words. It's just very uninviting to, to the eye and to, new, you know, to like casuals. Because they're going to be overwhelmed and be like... Oh, I have to learn every single effect for every card. And they're all each like a paragraph. What? Like, no, relax. Not every single card has to be a lullaby. It's okay. So I think that's pretty cool that they uh, still haven't crossed that line. I'm guessing, obviously, as the game gets more and more complex, it might happen. But I think it's cool. All right, let's do this. So we have a creature. Like I said, I'm pretty obvious, overwhelmed. That must be a keyword. When an opponent plays a card, you make deal damage equal to that card's cost. Ooh. To their base or a ground unit. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So, for example, if someone plays... Man, if someone plays Super Laser Blast, they're absolutely going to get destroyed. Because <laughs> I think that card is like 10. So, yeah. that's This is actually a pretty good one. Because it intimidates your opponent from playing. And it says you may. And it's, so, it's not like you have to activate it. 
So that's actually pretty good because you can bait your opponents and you can curve their play, essentially. As long as you have this out, it's going to serve to demotivate your opponent for making his number one play. If you know he's playing a Darth Vader deck and he's gonna, he wants to go to Darth Vader, you can just, you know, punish them very, very heavily for it. And it's just going to discourage them from going into those bigger monsters that they need to, you know, seal the game. So I think that's pretty neat. Sounds like a pretty good card. It's, I don't know. This card might be onto something, bro. This card actually seems pretty good. Uh, yeah, let's read Paul. Because if this is the number one, what the hell? If this is just another legendary, man. Discard up to three cards from your hand. Okay. Oh, so you can, act you can actually activate all three. Oh, man. I just have to eat my words. So discard up to three cards. And then depending on how many you discard, of course, you can choose uh, a different one of these effects, right? So you deal either two damage to any unit or base. Okay. You defeat an upgrade. Nice. And then you can make your opponent discard. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty versatile too, especially because you can do all three. I know that you're ne you're usually maybe not going to do all three because that is a pretty intensive commitment. Just, hey, here's like most of my hand. But it is pretty cool that you can just defeat for just one and upgrade or just deal two damage and maybe get over something pretty easily, you know. Or if your opponent only has one or two uh, cards in hand, you're going to seriously curve their ability to even do anything if you start, you know, just ripping them off, especially if you can play multiples. I don't know how that works, actually. What what are the rules in Unlimited? Because I think you can play three copies, right? So imagine you have, well, you're obviously not going to have enough discard fodder for, you know, three. You're never going to have, I imagine you're never going to have, uh, oh, no, because it's only one. Oh, my God, dude, this could be insane. If you can run three posts and you can somehow get pole fast, Dude, you can rip three cards of your opponent's hand just like that by sacrificing three. That's absolutely insane. And the difference is you're actually going to have this on the board and your opponent might not be as, you know, ready to equipped and he's not going to have any resources anymore. Dude, that's kind of insane. Oh, I completely forgot. I just read that card. I was like, dude, this two, these two cards are insane. What the hell? Let me, see. Let me read the other legendary. The other legendary is number four. Relax, but I just kind of want to read it. Reveal any number of resources you control. Play each unit revealed this way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, what are these legendaries, man? What the hell? Boba Fett's armor attached to a non-vehicle unit. That's pretty cool. Endless Legion. This one, this one also seems pretty good, but... Yeah, I hope you see that, right? <laughs> yeah, you're very rarely going to get this one off. But it, they, if you can get this off, that this is, I feel like, one of those win more cards, right? Where it's just going to be so situational just because it's so expensive. Unless you can find a way to ramp it up. But it's going to be pretty inconsistent in my opinion. So might be a one-off. Then we have Andor. I just wanted to give a shout out to Andor. I just like the movie and the movie Andor nice. I just like the, you know, that movie Rogue One. And one of my few movies I actually like the, you know, where it's a spin-off. Usually I, I'm not a fan of spin-offs. Just in general. I'm not in Star Wars, but just in general. And, uh, hey, I actually like this one. So I thought that was pretty cool. So then we have Andrew. I think this is from the show, though, specifically, because he does have the show again. But, all right, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Obviously, a fun opening. Uh, insane in terms of money just because of the pole. Two poles, just the one would have been enough. But, damn, they had to give me two of them. So that's pretty cool. Then we have the Crypt Dragon, or the Crate Dragon, sorry. And then we have uh, Endless Legion. So four legendaries. Pretty damn cool. We broke the average. The average is three per box. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe for the third video. We're going to be doing the uh, third opening. I think it's going to be my last actual opening. Or actually, no, it's not going to be. It's not even going to be an opening. Sorry. It's going to be more of a discussion. And that's going to be my final discussion slash opening probably. Unless you guys want another one, I can just drop another opening. Again, I should have more boxes. So yeah, let me know. Please like, comment, subscribe. And see you.